All roads lead to the vein. Hey, what's up everyone? Brad Chmielewski here with episode 155 of Shadow of the Vein. There wasn't a lot of news this week. We got some info on the Grumpjaw skin. I think Super Evil Megacorp is plugging away on update 2.5 and the spring championships that are happening in London. Uh, the SEA ones happened over the past weekend, but the London ones, I think uh, that's their big event. Uh, they're going to see that stream. We see a lot of the, the, the crew and the developers there, so I think it's going to be pretty big. It's at the Fnatic uh, headquarters gaming place there, so Fnatic's hosting it. So really awesome to see. I can't wait. I wish I was there uh, checking it out, hanging out with all the teams and the players. would be would be pretty awesome. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try to make it to the next one, but... Those happen, I believe, uh, next weekend, so we'll be talking about those on episode 156, kind of recapping those. Uh, I don't even know. I gotta, I gotta fill up my bracket. Everyone should fill up their brackets, try to uh, predict those winners. I know you can win some prizes, I think some ice, some other stuff too. So uh, that's in the show notes. We kind of talk about that. I have Pajama Drama joining me on this episode, talking about his... Uh, Vanglory career so far. He was with Phoenix. He was with Gangstars. He's putting together a new team to compete in the VIS League. Uh, so yeah, we kind of dive into that and kind of some uh, drama he was having with some name changes and things like that this past week as well. Uh, before we jump in this episode, gotta mention the Patreon page. That's over at patreon.com slash shed of the vein. Uh, love to if you can back the show, that'd be great. If you can support the show in any way. I do all this because I love the game. Uh, don't really make anything from this. Uh, so it's just for the passion, for the love of Vanglory, for the love of the community. I love everyone that listens and supports the show. Uh, it's been awesome. 155 episodes. So yeah, it's crazy. Uh, on nearly every week. I think I missed a couple weeks and then there's been double episodes so it's been it's been quite a lot of episodes. But yeah, check that out if you can. But let's do it. Let's get into this episode 155. Shatter the vein. This is the 150 Fifth episode of Shadow of the Vein. My name is Brad Chmielewski, and this is a podcast all about Vainglory. Every week, try to break down the news, gameplay, game tips, and hopefully, we can all become better players together. And every week, bringing on different people from the community, people that love this game, play this game, I'm just passionate about it. And this week, I have Pajama Drama joining me. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for having me on the show. It's an yeah. honor. Yeah, good to, good to have you here. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself if people haven't heard your name or seen you play? Yet? Yeah, so my IGN, I like to pronounce it Pajama Drama. I've been playing the game for over two years. I've been in and out of the amateur league and tournaments as well as the professional league. And as of right now, I'm just preparing for the next VIS and hopefully work my way up back into the Evil 8. Cool, yeah, I kind of want to get into that a little bit. But uh, yeah, stepping back. A bit. How do you how do you get into Vainglory? Were you playing other <laughs> MOBAs beforehand? All right, so it's a it's a little bit of a funny story. Um, Vainglory is my first MOBA. Uh, I was actually real big into first person shooters like uh, Halo and Call of Duty. Okay. But be believe it or not, I'm a big Apple product fan, and every year when they come up with the new uh, released iPhone, I always get the the newest and latest greatest product right. and back I, I remember back in november of like 2014 uh apple was having their latest keynote event and one of the games that was showcased at the event was actually vainglory and just the way that i remember it it was presented so well and the game just seemed so interesting yeah. and cool and so the moment it was on the app store i downloaded it and from the moment i started playing it i just fell in love and never put it down that's cool. It seems like a lot of people who are still playing now came from that keynote and were just like, this is amazing. I have to check it out. Yeah, it was so cool. I don't remember who exactly was on stage. It may have been Playoff Beard, but I just remember the presentation just seemed so interesting. And like just watching the game, I was like, oh man, I have to download this. I got to play it. Yeah. It's just 
It was a great experience. I know it was uh it was Tommy up there because he got a got a little bit of meme on him because of his scarf he was wearing, and I forget who was uh, also with him, but I don't think a playoff beard was there. Okay, <laughs> I remember Tommy though with with the uh, I think it was a purple scarf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that that's pretty awesome i'm surprised you haven't if you were a halo fan like dived into like sea ops now that that's on the mobile device uh I, i've played it here and there a couple times uh i'm just i i suck at it to okay. tell you the truth so <laughs> <laughs> it's just not for me <laughs> same with me so cool uh so yeah you mentioned you've been on a couple competitive teams uh what, phoenix and Gangstars over the years uh how's that how was that uh time on those yeah. teams yeah yeah, so those were the two teams that I've been on at a professional level. And, you know, I have nothing but good experiences playing alongside them. When I was on Reborn, the roster was starting all over, the mm-hmm. big dog, Cold and Meek, Wrecked, and I. And that was only for a short amount of time. Uh, I don't remember how many tournaments I actually played with big dog and starting all over. But from then on, I was acquired by Gangstars, where I played alongside with Fuji, Lone Delphi, and Mac Daddy B. Uh-huh. And, you know, playing professionally was an amazing experience. I got to live out some of my dreams on being on, I'm sorry, on being on teams with people that I idolized. And so okay. I have nothing but good memories. It was just an amazing experience. But, but the thing that a lot of people don't tell you, that playing at a professional level is just more than hard work. It takes complete dedication and only the strong will survive. You know, there's so many responsibilities that come with playing at a professional level. And staying in the competitive scene, and it's just hard to manage. Mm-hmm. But throughout yeah. throughout all the experiences that I had, it was just it was just good. I have no regrets of it. Did it was you, just complete bliss. Did you have like a I guess thoughts, but even before the game, like of being an esports professional or playing video games professionally at all, was that even a thought that crossed your mind? So before I even picked up Glory, I've always been a big video game freak. I've been playing video games all my life. Uh, I've always been a big geek, nerd, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> and I've always had the dream of playing professionally. And, you know, playing Glory was my real first experience at a professional level when I got into the Evil 8 or the VGL. And, and I've always had the dream of just competing at, at a professional level. So, yeah, I, I would say that nothing has ever changed this has always been my dream uh-huh. yeah you said it takes a lot of work i think that's i end up talking to a lot of people here on the podcast and a lot something that maybe doesn't come up is like the hours of practice that you have to you or you really should be putting in and i know the teams that are in the vainglory eight now they put in multiple hours every day and yeah, it's a full-time absolutely. job <laughs> Yeah, uh, I would say it's it's more than a full time job. It just it's crazy. It's 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 much harder than hard work itself. It just takes pure dedication. It's not for the faint of heart. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of hours that go into just training, preparing, and just getting ready to be able to compete. Yeah, and if you, I guess if you miss or take your eyes off that for a minute, like you can lose your spot. Like I think on the Halcyon report, Sue Generous was talking about how a couple of those teams that were in the challenge bat versus in the challenge teams like they didn't practice that week or that day and they kind of went in a little cocky and it kind of hurt them <laughs> yeah it, uh, I, you know i have this belief where if you're only if your team is only training you know let's say 30 to 40 hours a week there's always a team out there that's training twice as long as that and they're getting better than you mm-hmm. they're improving because they're just spending more time on the game and just dedicating more of their life to just becoming better yeah are you working on a are you trying to put together a new team now to kind of get back in the vanglory aid or even like see what happens in the challenger battles right so as of right now i'm in the process of forming a team to compete in the next vis my current teammates ign is benzo and he's my jungler and we're still waiting to give the official announcement on here will be but it's okay. someone who's competed in multiple live events online tournaments and they're pretty well known in the community Right now, we're just getting all of our details together at the moment and just preparing for the upcoming tournaments. Hopefully, we'll be able to work our way up to the Evil 8. Yeah. It seems like the talent pool in the VIS and the VGL right now is just like, it's massive because the teams, I, I feel like everyone got like spread out so much over the years. So now you have like Fuji and Call the Meek in the challenge battles. And it's like, what? What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. You know, back when I, my very first tournament, was i believe back in spring 
of 2016. And back then, before VIS, there was something called the VGL, and there was an amateur mm-hmm. league of that. And out of like 128 teams, my team got first place. And since then, I've seen the challenger teams that are here today, and I'm comparing them to how it was back then when I was in the amateur league. And talent has just improved so vastly. It's, it's just absolutely crazy <laughs> to the point where these challenger teams are playing on the same level as these pro teams, and they're just so close in skill matchup. It's just it's mind-boggling. Yeah, like I, I don't even know if you're if you're getting into this game now, just starting out, you have a long road ahead of you to start playing at this level. If you haven't uh, been already there, it's tough. The players are the players are good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. uh, well then, and then recently on Twitter this past week, you had a a, a bit of drama, and I kind of wanted to bring that up here in this with maybe the news. Uh, you kind of wrote this long Twitter post, and it was, it was regarding, like, name changes, right? Yeah, so so here's the thing. I ended up making a tweet that I was trying to just get everyone's attention, and whoever agrees with me and has the same issue that I have, I was encouraging them to share their experience and just communicate their opinions and hope that SCMC would hear where we're all coming from and be able to make a decision on whether or not IG and swaps are actually really important to the community because I believe that they are. Mm-hmm. So I have many friends in the community that have gotten the help to get new IGNs that have already been taken from inactive accounts yeah. where people haven't logged on to their account for you know a required period of time. They've gone ahead and taken those IGNs and given them to people. So that has happened. Now, emailed support asking if they would do the same for me and I was getting responses to on that they just didn't have the service anymore just because they implemented some sort of new rule that prohibited this service and so i was like uh, i just can't believe this just because it didn't strike to me just because i know that within that past week there's been i i know of three people that have had their igns changed so it just didn't make sense that they're saying that the reason they won't do it for me is because is because of several did they say and, what the rule was or just that there was a new rule. <laughs> well, uh, I was told that the new rule that prohibited the service was strictly because the support team's priorities shouldn't have to be... Mm, what's the word I'm looking for? I was told that the support team's priorities aren't... It's similar to like the, the name change thing that was way back when. That It was really just taking up too much time, right? Yeah, and it, they just thought it was an important issue just because there's such an isolated amount of people to mm-hmm. the point where the sport team doesn't need to be spending their time doing IGN swaps for people just because they have more important things to do. Yeah. But at the same time, I just don't agree with that just because if it's something that the community wants and there is actually a good amount of people that do want this change, then I think it is important because at the end of the day, I feel like the community is what keeps the game alive, you know? Yeah. Uh, so then I guess the issue became that you were told this, but some players were still getting it done for them, right? So, yes, I was told this and, uh, you know, they just don't offer the service, but players were still having it done. And it was just confusing for me because I'm getting two different kinds of responses and I'm getting... Uh, I'm seeing emails from people where they're graciously offering this IGN swap and then I'm seeing emails to other people, including myself, where they're saying, oh, no, we can't do it for you. And so it's like whether it is, is there actually a rule or is there not a rule? Are they just <laughs> breaking the rule? I don't I don't know. Um, but believe it or not, uh, I believe it was yesterday, I actually emailed support yet again asking and then they actually complied, and they changed my IGN to the one that I originally wanted. So it's like, why have I gone through the whole hassle of you telling me <laughs> that you just don't offer the service when you're just going to do it in, in the end? And I just... Well, it's almost like the <laughs> same idea. You know, many people out there have dealt with like Comcast or any kind of service, and you're just, you can call them three times and get three different things every, and, every time. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to hate on SEMC oh, or no, any of their yeah. support team or any of their employees. It's just that I'm genuinely confused about the whole situation just because I know that there have been people and there are still people receiving these IGN swaps. 
shops to the point where I don't understand why you're telling a select few of people that you just don't offer the service anymore. And I think that no one should receive any sort of service, you know, just because uh, people like them. I think that as long as you're a part of the community and you play the game, I think that everyone should have the, you know, the same right as any other people that get the service. Yeah, there is a... I, there is a little bit of in the Vanglory community, like who you know, kind of thing. You kind of sometimes stuff happens for you just because maybe of who of your, you know, yeah, of who you are and who you know. So it, it is troublesome sometimes and frustrating for players that like, well, I saw, you know, Brad got this done for him, and I can't get this done. Like that's not fair, right? So, so. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's how I look at it. That's that's my mindset. Yeah. So, well. Yeah, it is. I guess it is tough sometimes for those uh, name changes because you do have to find that account that's inactive, depending on what you want. So I'm sure players ask for name changes and swaps all the time. They're like, "No, that person's active." It probably often becomes a waste of time in some degree. But yeah, <laughs> that could be too. Yeah, like how many people do you think ask to change their name to Fuji every day? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, very cool. Like, we're well, glad you were able to get your name change done and brought some light to this and kind of, uh, you know, maybe Super Evil Megacorp will address this and kind of comment on it too. So that's good. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, well, that was kind of news related, but there's been some other news this past week that we should uh, jump into here. So let's do that. Vain Glory News. So the first bit of news that I know I touched on on the last episode with Mr. TNT, uh, but it's these talents that are coming to the brawl modes. Uh, so these are talents that you're going to be able to buy and earn in-game to basically make brawl modes more interesting and fun. Um, have you checked out these at all? Yeah, so I saw the little montage clip that is on the Vanglory web site and i saw the new brawl mode that's coming with the talents for certain heroes and it looks really cool i was super excited when they came out with blitz so i'm just as excited as now mm -hmm. do you play a lot of brawl modes or are you mainly strictly you know normal 3v3 oh I, 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 as much as i love rank i mean i love blitz i love casual practice modes. so i mean i'm all about the brawl modes just as well as i am rank it's all fun so i'm looking forward to it yeah these look pretty neat i was talking with somebody this past week about how brawl the nice thing about Blitz is it kind of like it improves your team fight ability. I don't know if you agree with that or not. Like just that you kind of your mechanics and kind of know how to fight in these groups a little better. It helps with that, right? So it looks like the talent is going to be taking a certain skill ability of a hero and just ramping it up. Yeah. However, so whether it just be damage or having an additional passive with the ability or something, so, something like that. But it's definitely taking an ability and just ramping it up. Mm -hmm. But so now that you have these like crazy abilities in brawl in in blitz and stuff, I wonder if when you translate to the other game, uh, maybe some players who are going into rank are kind of like, oh, I thought I could do a lot more damage. It kind of mess maybe changes your mindset a little bit. So you have to realize that you're playing two different things now. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I hope that when it happened, just because at the same time, you know, when you have these brawl modes, I think that they're mostly, you know, categorized to the people in the community that just want to have fun. Yeah. And, I, and I feel like it's just a different sort of category than it is from a uh, ranked or a casual game. And I think that if you're taking what you're playing with in a fun type of mode, uh, you don't need to take that into you when you go to rank. Yeah. I don't think that'll happen as much. Okay, so hopefully, maybe this separates us a little more and like makes it feel even more different. So that's cool. Uh, so check, keep eye out for these talents. They should be coming in update 2.5, which is probably going to be released like right after London here. Like, that kind of seems like the most logical, maybe some announcements here over the course of the next weekend so is that is that is that brawl mode going to be a 5v5 are you do you no, know that i believe it's still 3v3 i don't think i don't think we're ready for 5v5 i don't know i haven't uh, heard they haven't announced anything so <laughs> okay i wasn't i wasn't sure if it's still 3v3 or 5v5 but mm -hmm. okay so it's still 3v3 right now uh then another thing that's coming in update 2.5 are there's always new skins 
And one that got announced this week was this Grumpjaw Lapdog skin, which I absolutely love. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> I love it just as much as you do. It's uh, Grumpjaw is probably one of my favorite heroes. And the skin just looks cool. I'm going to get it as soon as it's released. Mm-hmm. I, I was wondering what they were going to do with heroes like Finn skins that came out. They were kind of, I don't know, they were okay. And Grumpjaw was kind of the same way where it's kind of like, what are they going to do to him? He doesn't. He doesn't wear any clothes, but this <laughs> is like a totally different character model, and this just shows like we can we can do anything we want, kind of with it. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I like it. it as as you said, it is a completely different character model, but at the end of the day, I think it's completely cool. What the team that makes the skins, uh, the artist team, whoever they are, they I think they're doing an amazing job. And as time goes on, each new skin that they're releasing is just getting more and more cool. Mm-hmm. Now we now we need like a third dog kind of character for the fold, so you could go like full like dog team. <laughs> oh, f- <laughs> fortress grump jaw skin and yeah, something, something else. else yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I kind of like that. Oh, so keep an eye out for that. We'll probably get more announcements for other skins uh, this coming week as well. Um, and then I mentioned the spring championships. Uh, they're coming up next weekend. London, are you? Uh, you obviously are in the esports scene a lot. Are you hyped for this? Are you excited to watch? This oh, team? <laughs> I'm super hyped. My friends are all talking about it right now, and I actually just participated in like the bracket challenge that Bangalore is hosting, where you can predict who's going to win the win the event, and the teams are going to lose. And so I actually just participated in that today, and uh, yeah, I'm super excited for the live event. I can't wait to watch it. Yeah, that's put on by uh, VGPro.gg, one of the analytics sites, so you can compare oh, yeah, that's the, right. the bracket. So I think Vanglory is working with them. Who'd who'd you pick? Who's on your what's your what's some of your outcomes there in the final? Who's your finals that you think are gonna face uh, each other? All right, so <laughs> on day three, I believe that finals and semifinals are going to be with Team Solo Mid versus Gangstars, mm-hmm. Cloud Nine versus Team Secret. And then the final will be Team Solomon versus Cloud9 with Team Solomon taking the win. That's my prediction. I, I really do think Team Solomon's going to take the win. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people are on the the TSM bandwagon here. They just you know perform so well in the in the spring season. It's going to be I think hard to unseat them. You know, it's their track record. You know, they've had multiple first prize wins, and it's just how they've competed within this past season. I don't mm-hmm. think I have any reason to doubt them. No, uh, no EU upset, I think. <laughs> uh, so this is the thing. Uh, I've been watching a couple EU matches here and there, and I'm really, I'm really rooting for Team Secret to come through. I, uh, as as much as I hate to say this, I really do think Team Secret is going to be beating Hammers, just because uh, oh, okay. to. To my knowledge, I'm pretty sure starting all over isn't going to be able to travel, and I think their sub, Max Green, is going to have to fill in for him. And I think that's going to be, I think that's going to be like a, a gunshot to the foot for, for Hammers, and I feel like Team Secret will have the upper hand when it comes time to burst them. Oh, yeah, that's a... Yeah, that's something all the all the players that can't travel, I understand like people have visa issues, school comes up, it is like the end of the year for a lot of people, so they're having a tough time with that, but yeah. You know, it's really unfortunate too, just because uh, besides starting all over, I think there are a few other people that are qualified for this live event, but they just can't travel. Um, I'm really not sure why, but I don't remember why the reason was that they made the North American championships not in North America and why they decided to implement this cross-regional play? Uh, I think it simply, it became too much work. Like, they were doing a NA finals, and then the next weekend they were doing an EU final. I think the resource and time was just way too heavy on Super Bowl Megacorp. They were basically out of commission for two weeks there because they were focused on those finals. Oh, well, huh? That wasn't brought to my attention. That's <laughs> that's unfortunate. Yeah, I th- I think it was, and maybe to build some of that like, uh, I guess passion between the the regions and kind of fight for that. But yeah, this way they only have to do one live event every yeah. every split, so it's a little less a little less work for them. <laughs> well, at the end of the day, North America is going to be EU, 
do because we all know North America is better than Europe. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, get ready for those. Fill out your brackets. Uh, you can win win some ice, win some prizes there. So check that out. Um, and then speaking of esports and championships, the uh, SEA championships happened yesterday. I haven't watched any of these games, but I, I wanted to mention it. Um, Elite 8, I guess, took the win over there as the first place. I haven't really watched much of these uh, SEA games, but I may watch some of these finals because they're, you know, it's the best team. So you know you're in for, like, a good matchup. <laughs> right. So I ended up watching the SEA championships. I watched the, the grand final where it was the best of five between Impunity and Elite Eight. Mm-hmm. And t- to be honest, I'm a big fan of Spaghetti and uh, Def Q. Yeah. And I really thought that they were going to take home the win. I was so sure of myself. I didn't think Elite Eight was was going to win. But uh, when it came time to the, to the match, they actually proved me wrong. Uh, I believe that the final score was... Uh, one to three with okay. elite with uh, elite eight having three points and i watched some of their drafts and a few of their games and i think for a majority of the games elite eight was able to just out draft them multiple times okay and the team synergy is just completely amazing it's so cool to see these uh, other regions play competitively just because compared to how it is in north america their compositions and just their the uh, way that they organize team fights and the way that they play the game is so different. And to me, it's a little off meta. <laughs> and it's just cool watching these different sort of play styles. But congratulations to Elite Eight, who's yeah. a real good match. So what do you what do you see that maybe would stand out if someone from North America or EU was watching? Like, were there different priority picks? Or, like, what was – were there surprise things that they're doing that maybe NA hasn't even tested out yet? Well, between the two picks – uh, but between the two teams, I think a lot of it came down to comfort picks. I know that Impunity likes Celeste a lot, and I feel like that's the reason why they were picking that into their drafts. But yeah. at the same time, I'm still trying to understand why it is that they drafted this way. Uh, there were a lot of poke compositions, and that's something that I haven't had a lot of experience with. This, this update, I've really been focusing on uh, melee comps. Yeah. So... I'm still trying to figure out why it is that they've drafted the way that they have. Okay. Yeah, but I'll, I'll include a link in the show notes and the descriptions to some of these VODs. So, yeah, check it out. Sometimes you can pick something up for even your own solo queue fun. Like, oh, let's let's try this. So, never always nice to learn from the professional players out there. Well, well that's it for the news this past week. It was a light week. I think we're, we're gearing up for these finals. Like I said, and we'll probably see some new stuff soon. But before we get out of here, I got a little forum static. Forum static. So on the forums, uh, we kind of touched on this 5v5, and this was a topic about like what features are you waiting for? Like, is there something in Vanglory? that you've either heard announced or that you want to see them add to the game. Uh, I know 5v5 came up multiple times in this post. Uh, is there something that you're waiting for, a jam a jam? Well, I'm absolutely still waiting for the 5v5. I think that would be a cool and interesting mode that just is complete chaos in games, and I'm waiting for that just as well as other people. But something that I've always want implemented into the game is somehow to communicate with your team in draft when you're solo queuing and you're not on voice. Uh, Yeah, we have thumbs up, but if there was some sort of chat feature where you could actually type and talk to uh, the teammates that are on your team when you're solo queuing, I think that would be a real cool addition in game just because... It's it's just a little bit of, you know, guessing who's going to play what and what heroes some people can play and what heroes some people can't play. And I think just having that would help all out for a lot of people that do solo queue. Yeah, I do agree. Some sort of uh, communication and draft because even, even trading, you're sometimes like, well, I don't really know. Are you going to actually trade with me? Like I've run into that where that happens. Or, like you said, like, well, you picked you picked this guy. Yeah, he's good, but I I'm not good with him. Like we're, you're gonna trade, and like this isn't gonna work out. But you you have no way to tell them, and then you get downvoted because 
poorly. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I know Evil 8 now does have uh, Double Bland implemented into their uh, tournaments. Mm -hmm. And I'm still waiting for that to be brought into the game, or at least some sort of feature, maybe in a practice mode, for when teams do scrim that they can actually do double ban just so that that's a way to uh, prepare for the upcoming tournaments that they have in Eblate. I know that Broken Myth, I believe, has like a, some sort of draft simulator yeah, they do. On, their, on their website. And that, that's good and all. Um, I'm sure a lot of teams do use that. I know that I, I use it from time to time. But I think that it's, it's a little bit weird that double ban hasn't been brought into the game yet just because that's the format that we're using in the professional league tournaments, you know? Yeah, I think they, well, they, one, need to give draft to a lot more other people who don't have it and then add this double draft mode. I think they're worried that maybe for the solo queuer, it creates even more time. Like, it's, we ran into, like, what, last week or a couple weeks ago where people were, the, the dodging was kind of getting out of control. So now you're... If someone dodges at the end of a double draft ban, that was five minutes that you oh, yeah. so you just get frustrated with the game, right? That that <laughs> that, that, that would suck. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna be honest. I I, I don't support the uh, uh, the new dodge thing oh, where okay. if, if if you if you dodge, you're penalized for it just because uh, at the tier that I'm at, whenever I solo queue, there's literally so many trolls to the point where people will just pick a troll pick uh, when you know like that hero's not going to work out in a certain comp and it'll get to the point when the, the toxic things come out and they'll just turret dive and throw the game on purpose and it gets to the point where there's so many people that do this in the community you begin to memorize their names yeah. and you know who you should and shouldn't dodge and so now it's like when there's someone that I know trolls and I get them on my team, it's like, crap, I'm stuck with them. So I'm almost guaranteed a loss now. Right. So, so it's like, do you lose the, do you lose the, the rank uh, skill tier just by dodging or do you play the 15, 20 minute game and still lose and like get upset? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's tough. But yeah, that's a that's a whole nother thing that someday maybe will be fixed. Maybe not. There's just always going to be trolls in the game. I think <laughs> that's true too. That's true too. Um, I saw someone mention on this forum post that they were looking for. They want to see like uh, stats or like kind of ranking things at the end. I know uh, Overwatch has this. Heroes of the Storm added this, where you kind of get like an MVP or kind of get some like hey this guy was the most damaged like he gets a award or he gets a little icon or something just some sort of like uh i guess some way to tell that like just yeah that would be that would be really cool to have that maybe some sort of like metal system as well i know that when they implemented the like double kill or triple kill or crack and secure things like that inside the game uh i thought it would be a good addition to add something that it's like medals like you know how like in halo or even call of duty when you'll get um a double kill or something at the end of the game you'll see the medals that you accumulated throughout that whole entire match yeah that might be nice because i know um, even league has like the stats at the end where you can be like well who did the most damage like i might have died a lot but i did a lot of damage like i i helped the team it may make people thumbs up and thumbs down a little differently if they, if they could right. see that but but <laughs> having an mpv an mpv at the end of the match so that would be a real cool addition i'd like that a lot mm -hmm. but maybe maybe we'll see that with the 5v5 as they're right now there's <laughs> six players like well yeah it's not as exciting who's the <laughs> who got the mvp <laughs> there so once there's 10 people in there <laughs> very cool oh, that's gonna do it for episode 155 pajama drama thanks for joining me this was great yeah thank you for having me on the show i'm a big fan and i hope i can come on come on again in the future yeah i'd love to once you get your team secure maybe we'll uh talk more about that uh but before that where can people find you maybe follow you on twitter do you stream any of that stuff yeah, so my Twitter handle is Pajama Drama VG, and sometimes I stream here and there on Mom Crush at Pajama Drama. Nice. Well, I'll include notes in the description and the show notes, so check that out. Follow them up. And yeah, get ready for London. I'll be back next week, probably after 
the finals there so we can kind of recap them. Uh, so keep eye out for episode 156 next week. And you can follow Shadow the Vein on Twitter at Shadow the Vein, website shadowthevein.com. All the episodes get posted there, links to iTunes, Stitcher, the YouTube version as well. And yeah, take care. Let's get this over with.